There seems to be this pendulum with technology, where products oscillate between getting bundled and packaged together over time, and then being inevitably unbundled, only then to go back and forth perpetually. This isn't limited to just the tech industry, but you can see examples of this trend with, say, the entertainment industry, music, software, and even now with AI. It's especially topical today with the recent news of the New York Times lawsuit against OpenAI, because we're once again seeing another example where tech might get either bundled or unbundled again. And so, in this video, we'll examine how and why this happens, and then tie it back in the end to how this might affect the AI industry going forward. Maybe one clear example to dive into first is the TV and streaming space. Remember back in the day before streaming, before Netflix and YouTube, when most people consumed media on TV? That was most of my childhood, where media consumption was very much unbundled and fragmented. To see movies, you go to the movie theater or to Blockbuster to pick up VHSs or DVDs. And to see live content like sports, news, or syndicating TV shows, you'd keep track of the TV schedule to make sure that you turn on the TV on the right channel at the right time to catch it, otherwise you'd basically miss it forever. Compared to today, it was so inconvenient, but of course over time, that content consumption experience evolved. Cable TV started to bundle channels together, and companies like Redbox would make physical media more accessible through kiosks and stores. Products like TiVo would allow viewers to record live shows and watch them later. And of course, Netflix started to grow by first mailing physical DVDs so that viewers could quickly access a vast catalog of content from the comfort of their homes. And just like that, a content consumption experience that felt unbundled and fragmented, where media was accessed piecemeal across a scattered ecosystem, began to get centralized and bundled. The clearest expression of this in the content space is the rise of streaming services. Streaming meant that viewers could forego all the physical media and antiquated TV sets and simply watch nearly any piece of content on demand. Media began getting bundled onto platforms like Netflix and YouTube, and with that came a great deal of convenience and selection for the consumer. Through the early 2010s, Netflix built up an expansive catalog of movies and shows by aggressively licensing titles. And by 2014, they hit their content volume apex of nearly 10,000 titles available for streaming. As a consumer, you knew that by subscribing to Netflix, you would have access to an ever-expanding library of content that was well worth the price compared to what you would pay for each title alone. But by the late 2010s, new streaming services arose to compete away Netflix's catalog. Major studios started to pull their licensed content and use that proprietary media as the foundation of their own streaming platforms. Disney+, Plus, HBO Max, Hulu, Paramount+, Plus, Amazon Prime, and more now each began to carve out their own slice of the streaming pie. Today, as a consumer, you have to subscribe to multiple platforms in order to keep up with what's popular. I distinctly remember watching reruns of The Office on Netflix and finding it pretty inconvenient when NBC Universal pulled the license to move The Office to Peacock. Just when we felt like we moved beyond the deprecated experience of 20 years ago, of subscribing to various cable channels, going to different outlets to buy different movies, and watching ads all the time, we now find ourselves in a similar situation again. So why is it that these products seem to progress and then regress all over again? A big piece of it is certainly the capitalist incentives to balance each side of the scale. The process of businesses bundling and aggregating products and services together is just one form of monopolization. In a free market, businesses will compete, and within any given industry, one or more parties will start to win and pull ahead. To solidify their lead and stifle their competition, they then start to verticalize and control as much of that market share as possible. One way of doing so is by acquiring or rolling up competing interests, and this trickles down to the consumer as bundled products. A snowball effect then builds where the incumbent can outprice or undercut their competitors by offering the same or better product, but empowered by economies of scale and platform dominance. But just as goods and services tend to bundle over time, the inevitable trend seems to be that they eventually unbundle again. So in the example of Netflix, they have the first mover advantage of innovating into streaming and outpacing legacy movie studios. Their growing content catalog cements them as a premier streaming platform. By having the best content, they then attract a critical mass of customers, which gives them even more leverage in acquiring more content. But by this point, the checks and balances of the markets start to mobilize. As competitors realize the opportunity in streaming, they all point their crosshairs at Netflix and begin to collectively compete the market away, and the products then begin to unbundle again. If you look closely, you'll see this force at play across all sorts of industries. In the finance industry, companies like SoFi and Robinhood are trying to make everything apps that roll up previously separate services like investing, banking, loans, credit cards, retirement accounts, and more. On the other hand, there are still plenty of specialized companies trying to unbundle these services. Take for example, Evela, a company just focusing on creating spending accounts for couples. I actually made a video about them a couple years ago. In the food space, there's no clear example of bundling than DoorDash or Uber Eats. On the other hand, there are a bunch of restaurants trying to unbundle. Take McDonald's or Chipotle, for example, as companies who run their own mobile apps specifically for their own chains so that they can own the customer relationship directly and don't lose margins to third-party apps. In the software space, take Adobe for example. They used to sell Photoshop or Adobe Premiere Pro as separate products, but now they have Creative Cloud, a subscription that bundles everything together as one. Then take Figma as both an example of bundling and unbundling. Figma offers a standalone design tool unbundled compared to Adobe. 
But Adobe then tried to bundle by acquiring Figma to make it part of the Adobe suite. Regulatory checks and balances then came in to stop the acquisition from happening. We can also look at the music industry. Just like the movie industry, you had to buy physical media back in the day. Over time, though, it was disrupted by services like Napster, LimeWire, Spotify, iTunes, and more. But just as music platforms have aggregated music content, we now also see examples of music labels pushing back and trying to spin off their own content. Fast forward now to today. There's no doubt that in the AI space, we're going to see these forces play out again. When ChatGPT took off, tons of so-called ChatGPT rapper startups also started to proliferate. These startups would use language models like ChatGPT and just rescan or repurpose it as a different or specialized tool. We then saw OpenAI announce the GPT store, which immediately signaled a bundling moment of a platform aggregating AI supply and demand. At the same time, we're now also seeing the New York Times lawsuit against OpenAI alleging infringing use of New York Times content that may potentially comprise 1-2% to of ChatGPT's total training. Depending on how that lawsuit plays out, we may see yet another unbundling moment in the AI space. Will companies that wield powerful datasets like Reddit, Quora, the New York Times, or more try to spin up their own LLMs? Maybe it's more likely that they'll just license their data for a fee. But regardless, this push and pull of platforming and deplatforming, bundling and unbundling will continue to play out. At the end of the day, the examples of this are endless, but there are a few key takeaways. One, despite the forces of unbundling, I think that over the course of history, there is a net centralizing force. For example, with streaming, I would say that content is still much more bundled today than, say, 20 years ago, despite all the competition in streaming services. And two, bundling on the surface appears very consumer friendly, and in many ways is, but should be checked because there is a true danger of monopolization. Take Amazon Prime, for example. I'm a loyal subscriber and appreciate the convenience of the service, but I know that I have no leverage whatsoever in that relationship. The price just keeps getting higher, more ads are starting to show up in their streaming service, and there's nothing I can really do about it. Lastly, it's good to note that bundling and unbundling happens everywhere, and as consumers, it's important to pay attention because we ultimately drive the demand and market for these products. So that's all I got for now. I hope this was interesting, and I appreciate you for watching.